Welcome to the Joyful Miles Podcast, the podcast that's all about inspiring you to enjoy life one mile at a time. I'm your host, Rob, and joining me today, we have Jackie. Hi, everyone. And Laura. Hey, everybody. And we are all back. It's been Woo-hoo. a few weeks we together. Holidays are over uh, and that kind of craziness, but we are back from the Dopey Challenge. Finally, it's so f- crazy that we've been planning it for so long. <laughs> I and know, it's it so sad. And very, very quickly. And, and now we're going to be here recapping the heck out of it. So <laughs> we're going to have um, just a boatload of stuff over the next couple of weeks. We're going to try to release um, a few podcasts this week. I'm betting at least three this week and a couple next week just to get through all of everything, plus all of the videos on YouTube you're going to see and our blog recaps. Um, but before we get to all that fun and excitement, ladies, while we were down um, last week, uh, Run Disney came out with an announcement regarding the Star Wars races, and they came out with a virtual run uh, to kind of complete the Kessel Run that was not happening this year because of the, the No Disneyland race. So wh- um, what do you guys think of this? I think it's a great idea because if I had signed up for Light Side, you know, a lot of people signed up intentionally, you know, purposely to get the Kessel Run, and then when that was canceled, you know, that was they were disappointed. So mm-hmm. I definitely think it's the best way to try to fix the you know, solve the issue. It was a brilliant move by Run Disney. Very smart. Yeah, I mean, obviously, this is not what they wanted. And so they did the best they could. And, you know, try to make sure that people get that, what is it, the Kessel Run. Kessel Run. So I'm doing uh, Dark Side. Uh, So I did sign up for the Kessel Run. Um, $59 if you want to do the half, $69 for the, the, the challenge. Um, so not bad. I don't typically go for virtual runs, but I think this one makes sense. I think it's a nice way to kind of satisfy the, you know, those coast to coasters that we're trying to do stuff. And I kind of wonder if this is something we're going to see at least in the interim until we get Disneyland races back. Um, you know, if we'll see more of this, but I got to say, I like it. I think it's a great idea. Um, we saw the medals. So we got a sneak peek at the half marathon medal for the dark side, which, you know, it's a stormtrooper which, you know, my family's crazy about. We love stormtroopers in this house. (laughs) Uh, The virtual half looked a little odd, but it looks like it's got like a movable piece to it. Um, But then the Kessel Run is the Millennium Falcon, so who who doesn't love the Millennium Falcon? (laughs) Um, So, yeah, so that's that's, that was kind of the big news that kind of happened while we were down there. Um, And registration is open until the end of February, I believe, and then you have to complete your um, your virtual run in March. And then what they'll do is they're going to mail the virtual half to your house. But then if you're running the, the dark side, you're going to get your Kessel run challenge medal, um, when you complete the race. So that is that's, pr- cool. that's cool. That's, that's very pretty cool. cool. And that's different. You know, that's a little different. Yeah. You know? So you don't have to wait months to get your medal. You actually have something to kind of get at the race and, and wear around too. So I thought that was a nice touch. Very nice to us. Are you guys just out of curiosity? Are any of you doing the uh, virtual running shorts this year? No. Have, have they announced them already? Did I miss that? Uh, it's not open for registration, but it is it is scheduled. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Probably not. They haven't said, I, as, as far as I know, they haven't said the theme. I know the first year was Mickey. Last year was Pluto. Unless they came out with the Stella theme that I absolutely loved. Probably not. Yeah. Like I said, you. I don't typically go for virtual runs. Um, a friend of mine actually registered for the Star Wars half, Dark Side, at the expo, and she got twenty dollars off and a backpack. And I, wow. I, I know I was like, hmm. What? I was kind of like, maybe it's a good thing I didn't see that booth. I know <laughs> it's a good thing maybe. you didn't see that either. Was the backpack really awesome? I don't know. I just heard the word. But she just said it. I don't know. Someone saw the backpack posted on our Facebook page. I want to know. I was going to say, if anybody <laughs> signed up uh, last week at the expo, let us know. Shoot us a picture of the backpack and, and make uh, Jackie rule the day that so, you do it. <laughs> that would have been tempting. I know. So that's kind of a good segue into the expo because I never even saw the Ron Disney booth where you would have signed up because the expo was not the typical expo like we're used to. So I don't know if you guys want no, to roll into that. No, have a lot to kind of get to uh, regarding that. Uh, and the expo, so we got there on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Um, we had signed up for the challenge through a travel agent. Um, so we got a two-night stay um, to th- through them that got us the dopey registration. And it was before the actual registration went 
live. So that kind of worked out for all of us because as we all know, Dopey ended up selling out. Uh, and it just, it was a nice way to guarantee that we could all make sure that we were going to be there. Mm -hmm. And the expo started on Wednesday. And I think all of us missed the fact that <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> starting at 10 o'clock <laughs> like it normally yeah. does. Cause we had plans of uh... going a little later in the afternoon after the kind of the initial rush that usually happens from, <laughs> you know, the, the, the eBayers and stuff like to try to get there and, and load up on merchandise early. But that was a theme throughout the whole weekend. We weren't yeah. exactly following our all our own advice at times. And this was one of them. We didn't read through the event guide. <laughs> we didn't yeah, notice think, until very late. It was like Tuesday. I was like, wait a minute. This doesn't even start till 12. That's like, that's when we were planning to get there when the crowd would die down. This isn't going to, this isn't going to work out. So what happens is the VI, they have that VIP thing that you can purchase that allows you early access to the expo. Now, typically when they do that, they've done this before, but it's the night before you get to go in. So you get to go in like the night before, um, before everything opens and you kind of get the first dibs on everything. Apparently for this, <laughs> this year, it was at 10 o'clock for the, the VIPs and the regular admittance wasn't until 12. So once we kind of figured that out, <clears throat> um, but we went to breakfast at Kona. And then we had Shaylee and Michael were with us. So we wanted to go to Magic Kingdom and you guys went back to the room and it was just pouring rain. <laughs> it was pouring like the rain. worst weather ever. Like yeah. it was as bad as you're going to get. It was yeah, cold, so raw, so weather, cold, uh, sideways, windy rain. Yeah, think... Weather's a pretty common theme for this week and then it's yeah. going to come up a lot. But, but we still decided to go to Magic Kingdom. We had a blast because there was nobody there and it was like walk on everything. <laughs> You guys are crazy. <laughs> you guys were at spa uh, Splash Mountain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're already oh wet. My gosh. You Nuts. don't get that wet on Splash. There was they, they can change the water and how you know how, it was like no water running. It was fine. Um, crazy. But I will so, say, thank God that it didn't rain like that during the races. Yeah, like, all I kept saying is like, let's we just had get it to over with. with. Yeah. It reminded me of Broad Street. It was that type of rain and cold. Yes. Was that, it was. Uh, yeah, I was having flashbacks. <laughs> but anyway, so after, you know, we were at Magic Kingdom and we started seeing everybody's posts of the craziness and the lines they had to wait just to get in. And I was like, what the heck is this? What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause we're all in the room, like waiting to go. And we were like, guys, maybe we should just wait. And yep. instead we are working on our, we decided to work on our costumes, right? That's when we yeah, were working we on our Elvis belts. Yeah. We were like, you know what? Let's start, get the gems out and glue, glue our costumes together because we knew we were just going to get aggravated and stand in line all day. So mm -hmm. we, I think we all both agreed. We all ended up getting there around what, two or three. Possibly? Yeah. And we were going to go. You guys got there first. You were probably closer to three. Yeah. I think we were closer to four by the time we got there and it was still yeah. a madhouse. Yeah. We went to yeah. the grill. <laughs> yeah, oh it yeah. Was, it was still a madhouse. It was pretty crazy. Um, one of the things I noticed off the bat, we had Ubered over uh, just because we knew we could get dropped off at the front. We were only at Animal Kingdom, so it was only a few bucks to get over there. Um, but where, but after I was dropped off, I noticed the buses were all loaded closer to the front on the right there. And typically, they're in the back left of the parking lot. I don't know if that was something different this year that I just that wasn't aware of. Um, but it was it was definitely it was definitely much closer to the entrance thing because usually you have to walk quite a ways. Right. Um, to get to and from the expo. That's good, because that's part of the reason we took Uber. Exactly. Like, I didn't want to walk that far. So. <laughs> and the other thing I noticed walking in, too, is they had all the backdrops uh, for the different races for your photos more off to the side, more off to the right, where they weren't um, kind of in the way of everything. Yeah, we were going to get photos while we were going in. Then we're like, no, 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 we'll wait. And, of course, by the time we got out there, it was dark. So we were with Jenna Lynn and we all had our phones out trying to put light on us in the dark, trying to get these photos. They turned out cute, but yeah, lesson learned, always get them right yeah. away if you want them. And I think a lot of people probably walk right past them because they were pretty far to the they side. Were. And, it was mm -hmm. kind of hard to notice at first because at first I was like, where are they? Yeah. I was like, did they get rid of them? Yeah. So th that's a bummer if people miss those, but that'd be kind of on the way out. Um, when we got there, the line to get in to pick up your bib was actually all the way outside. I know, Rob, I saw you guys when you were coming in. It had pretty much gotten to the point where you were in the building already. But for us, it was looping down ropes along the outside when we first got there. But it was moving pretty fast, so it wasn't yeah, too Jenna big of a deal. Yeah, I saw Jenna Lynn um, when I first walked in. She would basically been there all day. Yeah. And she had said that Dopey was pretty nutty all day. And she's never seen that before where it was just as mad because they, they had different 
lines for the different registrations. And they actually did a, the other different thing I noticed is they had more packet pickups at the baseball field um, in the in the concourse there. Typically, you get your kid races um, over there, but I think they also had the 5K and the 10K only registrations there as well. Your dopey, goofy half and and marathon were were in the um, the downstairs oh, yeah, of the. Right. Um, mm -hmm. is that the field house? Yeah. I always confuse those built. I buildings. know. <laughs> the one to the left. Now they renamed them left. too. <laughs> I know. They're not even called the, it's not even the Jocelyn center anymore. I can't remember what they call it, but it'll um, be something else by next year. Probably. <laughs> yeah. But once, once inside, uh, I mean, getting my packet was relatively simple. Yeah. My um, line was not long it, at it all. That big of a line. It was pretty easy. Um, and then, you had to go get your uh, your T-shirts and everything. Well, uh, we got our commemorative items. And thank goodness, it wasn't a gentleman who led us around to the right one because we were going to wait in that hideous line. It would have been the wrong one. Yeah. And the line for the back, commemorative, you, it, was, it was rather short. I mean, it was had a few, but it moved quickly. So you got commemorative items first and then backtracked to get your shirts? No, you got your shirts first because yeah. we had all our shirts. And then you actually went into the area where like all the merchandise was, but it was split in half. And the yeah. one side was to pick up your commemorative items. Yeah. And then the other side was all the people just shopping for and any that line other. Was incredibly so, long. I couldn't get over. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Thing. And not only that, it was outside. So the entire yeah. line was pretty much outside when the weather was so bad. Everyone was stuck outside. Yeah, we all decided they, that we did not need a pin that bad because we didn't plan on spending a lot of money anyway. We we're like, you know what? Forget it. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Laura and I had picked, bought the commemorative jackets, which this is the first year you couldn't do it, at least for me, that I couldn't do any return. So yeah. you're spending $100 on an item. You don't even know what it looks like. Um, we did like the jacket, but nice. for, it, yeah, but they didn't fit right for me. Um, the medium, which I usually wear, was just way too tight. And yeah. then the large for me was just too boxy. Um, I couldn't return it, but luckily a friend liked it and they bought my a friend Leslie bought mine from me. So yeah, I, I had a little disguise too because the, the sleeves were so tight, you know, because of my, my burly muscles, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but I yeah. liked it. I always like getting the jackets. There's the the one thing that I will spend money on because I will wear it all the time. Yeah, this is the first time I got the jacket and I'm happy with it. Glad I did. Tried it on and it fit fine because um, they do have the booth there that you can exchange for different sizes. Um, which is a good tip. Yeah. Uh, and I also got the pins too, doing the dopey challenge. I wanted to make sure I had all the pins. Yeah, that was smart. Yeah. yeah Cause it's all, it's one of those things. It's always a pain in the neck to try to get them all. And yeah. it's just easier to have them pre-ordered and, and, and you're done. Um, that's the one thing I always pre-order when I do these races. Um, I will say a quick hint is <laughs> if you're buying a commemorative jacket and you wear your medal, be careful. Cause I had a few snag marks for my medal, even though I checked for sharp points and I put a, a layer over top of, of, of belt. So yeah, just be a little careful wearing your medals with those because they do snag quite I noticed. Easily. I noticed when I got home, I had a, a couple of snags on the front of mine. Just take, a, just take a razor, a disposable razor, and very lightly go over it, and yeah. it'll take up all the fuzzies. Okay. Just Good don't tip. press down hard. Because I was a little bummed. I was like, oh, Laura, Laura's going to be ashamed of me. <laughs> no, I, even, I checked, and I even lined my medals with like the heads of felt, and I still got snags. So yeah. So one of the other tips you always give Laura, too, is when you pick up your shirts, is to try them all on Yes. Um, to make sure that they fit. So I actually, apparently when I registered, I was much larger. So I ordered large shirts, but they were huge on me. Um, I was like, this is not going to work. So I asked the guys, I was like, where can I go to exchange my shirts? And of course it was in, um, the, the, on the expo floor in the other building. So I, uh, Shaylee was over on the, the expo floor, on the merchandise floor. So I asked her just to pick me up a, a dopey magnet. That's the only thing I ended up getting out of this. Um, and I walked over to the t-shirt exchange. It's my first time doing it. And let me tell you, there was a lot of um, people looking to exchange men's larges and there yeah. was no mediums available. So um, when I walked over there, the guy's like, well, there's a group of people standing by the end of the table waiting for their sizes to come in. So wow. that's what we did. We hung out. There was a, another, there was a gentleman there trying to exchange his mediums for a small. I don't know how he was going to fit into a small. He was, he was taller than I was. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's like, well, if we can find a small, you know, I can give you my medium and, and this, that, the other. So I was like, well, it's probably not going to happen because it's probably not going to get anybody going from small to large. But, um, but sure enough, after a little while, another gentleman came by and, and had mediums looking to get into a large. 
Uh, so we were able to swap all those. You're out. like, hey, right here, right yeah, here. The only one he'd he had already uh, he had already grabbed a large five um, k shirt, so he wasn't exchanging that, which was fine with me because I'm probably never going to wear the five k shirt because it's yeah. cotton. Yeah. Um, but I was happy with that because I was a little nervous because I'm like, oh my god, I'm never going to be able to wear these shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, always get the yeah. small for the 5K and I never wear them because I'm not a t-shirt person out in public. So I actually exchanged mine for a bigger size to wear <laughs> at night with pajamas. Yeah. So. No, that's right, it was yeah. a cute t-shirt though. I just really wish they would do the tech t-shirts for the half. I mean, no, sorry, for the 5K. That would be nice. Yeah, um, I don't know why, the, you know, the, I mean, I, I don't know. I guess, I don't know. I, wish they I will um, say too, you're very lucky you got the dopey uh, magnet because that seems to be the hot item this this race, I mean, people talk about doonies or sneakers. I am seeing uh, dopey magnets on eBay for over a hundred dollars right now. What? Yeah, people yeah. are selling their dopey. I those like Lauren's grabbing my my magnet right now. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> like those are that's the hot item that they did not come out with enough of. So, and I had one and I gave it to Shannon. So, if she's listening, you're yeah. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Ann picked so, them up for us, so that was very cool. So what did you all think of the shirts? Her. I forgot to pay her. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, Ann. My <laughs> list is so crazy. I'm a little overwhelmed with everything that has to be done. I know. I will say, too, like, um, always check your sizing, too, because my dopey shirt was smaller. It's because they're produced at different times. It was fine, though. I just stuck with what I, what I had because um, the other shirts felt fine. But I, didn't, um, I heard a lot of people say that their dopey was cut smaller. I didn't notice for me, but they're probably all tight. Are you kidding me? Are people actually paying this? Yeah, oh I'm telling goodness. you. With bids, not just selling, but with bids. Oh, my God. So, anyway. so what did you guys um, think of the shirts? I, guess I, I actually liked them a lot. I love the shirts. Yeah. I, I loved them all. Even the gray dopey, which we tend to not like the gray. Yeah, we always kind of whine. There always has to be a gray. I, I like the white, but I will kill it. I mean, that's yeah, not going to last with me. I don't know how, I'm gonna, how often I'm going to wear the white. Goofy shirt. I think the white will look nice once once summer rolls around. A nice white shirt. I don't you know. I love the white. Really nice white hats too that were really cute, like the baseball cap. Yeah, we got the dopey baseball cap, and then I got a black. Uh, I love the black. Hat. Oh my gosh, yeah. I had to get one of those too. That was really nice. Yeah, but I like, I like the shirts. I love it when they have the black and the darker colors, and I love the red. Yeah, Jackie, I will mail your black one very soon. <laughs> Oh, thank you. <clears throat> and I'll end up with Jackie's shirt. Yeah, that's what happens when you have four girls in a small oh, hotel. Yeah. So we didn't um, uh, walk the expo floor very much. Uh, no. I was only over there to change my shirt. I actually stopped by the sports beans booth to pick up a box of beans. Um, and that was it for me. Mm -hmm. and, and ladies, you didn't either. But I'm wondering, did we think that the setup takes away from the vendors um, by having all the merchandise and, and packet pickup in one spot and just the expo in the other? I definitely think so. I had Absolutely. no reason to go over there and especially with the lines and how crazy and crowded it was. Like, I think they did a disservice to all the vendors in there. I mean, you could tell I did eventually at like six thirty run over there to get a honey stinger and it just wasn't busy. It really wasn't. It wasn't like it usually is. So I just think everyone was in line for the merchandise. And by the time they got done, they wanted to get out of there. Yeah, um, we walked through um, and then we decided to turn around and, and go to the grill because we were all starving. But yeah, I, I barely set foot in there and I actually needed to pick up some things. I needed some, you know, the shave lotion and some other stuff and I ended up not getting it. So It just wasn't worth it at that point. By the right. time you got through all the actual race stuff, you're just like, oh, forget it. Just forget it. Yeah, you're exhausted. I will we say did the, hang. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I will say, um, they also gave us a nice little surprise, which was not the, the last surprise we would get um, on this trip uh, through this race. Um, with our packets, they gave us a luggage tag. Yeah, that was really cool. The luggage tag and the, um, the bib holders, the bib. Uh, oh, yeah, the little bib, the little like, bib mag clip things. Clips, yeah, they were cute. <laughs> How do you we use tried them? them and we got we frustrated and just yeah. safety pins. <laughs> Seems like a good idea, <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, no, safety pins are much easier. And yeah, they were crinkling up a little bit. And plus, yeah. you got to use the bib like two days, so you don't you don't want to start off with it all right messy. They did give us luggage tags at the Pixar half weekend. Yeah, they, they didn't add Avengers though, so I don't know. Maybe 
it would be cute. This is my first dopey. Was this, did you guys typically always get two bibs or was it always one before? Yeah, it was two. It was always two? Okay. Yeah. Right? Yes. I don't remember. I can't remember now. I'm pretty. I feel like it was one, but maybe. I thought I remembered it only being one last time with the four. Yeah. And I think by like the end, it was destroyed. Oh, yeah. I'd have to go back and look at pictures. So they gave us two um, bibs, one for the 5K and the 10K and the other one for the half and the full, um, which I thought worked out pretty good. Yeah. Which reminds me, Jackie, I have one of yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one of my bibs too? Yep. See, I don't even notice these things are missing. That's I know. <laughs> and while we're at it, I have your red socks too. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> That's um, funny. So then we just basically hung out at the ESPN Grill for the rest of the night. That was very and lovely. We got to see um, some friends, Chris and Kim, stop by, and Jenna Lynn, and some uh, viewers stop by to say hello, which is always lovely. And it's the perfect opportunity to get your ESPN mug for your beer for the whole yes. week, because that'll yes. entitle you to half off beers basically the whole time, which is fantastic. Unless you forget to pack beer. it like I did, which was yeah. very, very disappointing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that, that always, that's always a tip. I didn't see a lot of people out there for the 5k and 10k, but they had the stands open because <laughs> we, you said Laura, that they don't typically do them for the 5k. I didn't think they served alcohol after the 5k and 10k, but you know, Hey, hmm. it, was, it was pretty early. I don't know if they have laws about that in, uh, yeah. in Florida, but and it was cold um, too. So cold. So cold. <laughs> so oh my cold. gosh. Uh, and that was basically the expo for us. So, I mean, ladies, any other thoughts about the expo and other than the, the craziness? I just really think, I think they made a mistake with the, uh, the time change. That's my opinion. Mm. Um, it just gave us less time to get everything done and crunch. So I hope they, they fix that next year. Do, do the, do the VIP sooner or don't do it at all. Well, like I said, they, you know, I was fine with it being the night before cause it doesn't really affect anything. Yeah. But I think by starting it later, they just, and, and how many people didn't realize it and still got there for 10 o'clock. Yeah. I think it just created this awful back, back jam. that just, they never recovered mm -hmm. from. Right. Yeah, was, I will say that the way they handle the crowds is quite brilliant. Yeah. They did it. They did a really good job with the crowd control and the lines and the. the Except I'm sorry, having everyone wait outside along a baseball field in the pouring rain. Yeah, that that right. is not so good crowd control. Right. Right. What, yeah, but what, like, you got to think realistically, like, they never had that before. Like, what if it was thundering? What if it was lightning? Like, what would you do? Hmm. They I mean, they can't. Princess. One of the years for Princess was insane. I don't think it was last year. I think it was the year prior. It was, it was that insane. That's crazy. And I was surprised, yeah. too, because I'm thinking, like, you know, there's not as many dippy runners as there are for the whole marathon. It wasn't going to be as crowded. I was wrong. I definitely think they increased the amount of dopey runners. There was a lot and for all the races. I mean. We'll get into that, but I do, I do feel like everything just seemed very busy. Yeah. The crowds, the courses, et cetera, but it's just, you know, it's a moneymaker. Why not? So. But we did get a picture with Mickey. Oh yeah. That was cool. That was yes. fantastic. We ran over late and um, we got it in time and we had. <laughs> we were like, is Mickey all still there? Black, all of us had on black shirts <laughs> and Shannon had her jacket on and Jack and I were on one side of Mickey. And I'm like, should we have Shannon take her coat off? Should we have Shannon take her coat off? Should we have to check? He's like, take her coat off, Shannon. But it was, just, it was a great picture. But then it turned out really nice. It turned out really lovely. <laughs> We're always thinking about color coordination. Huh. You're rubbing off on me, girl. Yes, uh, pretty good. <laughs> it makes for a good photo. And then we got uh, nice pictures by the banner. And it was, just, it was fun. It was relaxing and fun. And yeah, we got back late. <laughs> I was very surprised how long we were there. Yeah, considering we had a race the next morning. We, were, we didn't get home till about 8 o'clock. Then we had to pack and get our, our clothes ready. And, and that's something we're going to get into. But my goodness, every night before each race, that took a lot of time planning. So, yeah. All right. So you heard what we thought about this expo. I want to hear about what you guys thought. I mean, we know there's a lot of you there last week uh, going through it. Varied opinions. Did you like the expo? Did you like the new setup? Um, you know, why does when does he have to always change the setup every time we do an, a different race? <laughs> <I don't. laughs> so, <laughs> why? Um, let, us, let us know what you thought. Um, and like I said, be on the lookout. Um, we, we will be covering the 5k in our next show, uh, which will probably release on Wednesday and be sure to follow along on Instagram and YouTube and Facebook and Twitter. And if you haven't already join our Facebook group, the joyful miles running club, um, you'll have to answer a question now, just yeah. keep your fake accounts out of, out of it. Um, but we're having a lot of fun over there. 
Um, and we'll talk more about that uh, as we go along here. So ladies, uh, I'm looking forward to the, everything else that we still have to cover and reliving this, this whole week. Uh, but for now, um, we want to thank you all for listening. Have a joyful And really day. quick, sorry to cut you off, but thank you to everyone who said hi and came up to us at the expo. We met so many people, yes. so I just really want to say thank you to everyone. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You made, you made the expo extra special. For us. All right. You. So for Jackie, Laura, and myself, thank you for listening. Have a joyful day, and we'll see you next week. Take care, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> You did you it, like Rob. Seconds remaining. Jackie's like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> 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 We're about to get cut off here. <laughs>